Hi everyone, welcome to another video at Life as a Med Student. My name's Nabil and I'm finally a medical student studying in the UK. In today's video, it's the big question, Apple or Android? Now this video isn't a direct comparison as to what's better, Apple or Android per se. It's more an explanation of why after a decade, I decided to make the switch from Android to Apple. So for nearly 10 years, the only phone OS, the only smartphone operating system that I was familiar with was Android. And it all started with the HTC Desire. It was my first smartphone, my first touchscreen phone, my first view into what the future would hold. I then moved on to Google's range of, of smartphones with the LG Google Nexus 4. And I remember at the time, I, I didn't really have a clue what, what that phone was meant to be. Was it a Google phone? Was it LG? What was Nexus? But what I can say, it was really well priced at the time. I think it cost not even £250. What's that? $300, a bit more than that. And for the money, it was, it was the perfect phone. It had a really great camera. For the whole life that I had it, it ran really smoothly and quickly because it always got the latest Android updates before anything else. The natural progression from the Nexus 4 was the Nexus 5, which again was a couple of years of just an absolutely perfect device. Great camera, ran smoothly, latest updates, and again, well-priced. And I could say the same about when I traded up to the Nexus 5X, but for a couple of, well, yeah, I, I smashed the screen a couple of times. I think it fell out of my pocket in the kitchen and I dropped it on a treadmill. So factoring in the screen, screen repairs, I couldn't really say that it was a um, good value for money in the end. And then came the Google Pixel 2, my last Android phone, my last Android device even. And if it was to be my last ever Android device, then what a way to go out. I really loved uh, my Pixel 2. Um, I'd say for the good first few months of, of switching away from Android, I really missed my Pixel for that entire time. It was a difficult transition for me. But 2020 was indeed a very strange year, not just because of how the whole world went to hell, but for the first time in my life, I was about to venture into the realms of the unknown by buying this iPhone 11. It's by some company called Apple. Okay, before this all gets a bit too cheesy, um, in all seriousness, I have been using Apple MacBooks for years. I just don't think that there's a mainstream laptop out there that is more reliable over a long period of time, that will hold its value, that can compete with, with Apple's MacBook. But I was never ever at any point over that 10 years inclined to make the shift, to make the change from Android to Apple phones. So what is it that's changed now? And why is it that I'm now not only in possession of a MacBook, but the iPhone, an iPad and an Apple Watch? Now, it's not the reason that you might think, but it's all down to one thing, health tech. All right, so some of you might have be, been able to guess, you know, medical student, yeah, it's gonna be something related to, to, to health. It can't be underestimated just how far Apple have gone in developing their health technology in, in the last few years. And more so than anything else, it was actually the features of the Apple Watch that made me seriously start thinking about making that shift over to Apple. The Apple Watch at the moment has got some, if you think about it, really incredible health features on there. Everything from the way you can use its exercise tracking for, you know, already fit and healthy people to track their progress, the way that, you know, people who are looking to try and get healthier, try and get more fit, can use the device to, you know, make a start and heading in the right direction. But then there's the things like the fall detection. I mean, how valuable can that be for elderly people, frail people, people who are, might have conditions like epilepsy? The sophistication of their heart rate monitoring and the you know, inbuilt ECG. And one of the things that I can say is, you know, the whole while I was using my Android devices, I, I would always sort of point fun at the fact that, you know, I, there'd be features on, on the phones that I had that, yeah, you'd see them on the iPhone two and a half years down the line. But what you found that with that, you know, the delay in getting the, the, the same feature across onto Apple, it always wound me up just how, much, uh, just how much more slick any feature that ends up on an Apple device ends up being. And, you know, one of the most important things when you're talking about health technology is it has to be really 
are reliable all of the time because if you advertise it as something that can help pick up, say Apple's ECG monitor says that it will pick up an, an arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation AF. If it can't do that consistently, there's no way that Apple would get away with even suggesting that the device can be used in that way. And, and more recently, I read that Apple are even looking into developing a way of monitoring people's blood sugar levels using an Apple Watch without actually implanting anything into the skin, just purely off wearing this Apple, wearing an Apple Watch and it will monitor your blood sugar levels. And that can be completely game changing for, think about how many people have diabetes. It's one of the most common diseases in developed countries. When I've been working in hospitals over the past three, four, five years, there's always people have come in with complications of diabetes. There are people who have come in with really high blood sugar levels, really low blood sugar levels. And the rate at which Apple consistently look to make strides forward, I think it will just, it, I think we could be looking at a point where by having access to their health technology, I genuinely think that we're going to end up seeing things that will suggest that people with these devices will live longer. So as someone who is, you know, surrounded by and, you know, whose life is made up of healthcare, I was more than convinced. In fact, I came to the realisation that actually going forwards, it's, it's the Apple ecosystem that, that you want to buy into. So it's a pretty short video. Hopefully it was just straight there to the point, explaining the, the big reason why I've, you know, jumped ship from Android to Apple. I've no doubt that in the future I'll probably be doing, I probably will be comparing my experiences of using Apple products to when I was using my Android phones. There's certainly a lot of features and things that I got used to that are worth comparing. But for now, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you like this video, please do drop a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you next time.